if you have a negative emotional charge around becoming attached, you simply will not do it. You might even sabotage it. You might step into a space where you could do it, but then you prevent it from happening and you, you stop the momentum because I have a negative charge around it. What's that negative charge? Something like fear, apprehension, anxiety. So if that's you, and that's most people that have issues with attachment, that's most people that are dating right now. I want to be attached to you, but I have fear around becoming attached. Hey y'all, welcome to Boundaries and Grace. My name is Taylor Chandler. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist helping you break negative relationship patterns by shifting your attachment style. Hey y'all, today we're gonna talk about attachment and dating, how to manage anxiety and apprehension around becoming attached while trying to find your person. And by the end of this, I'll give you four things to focus on to help you better determine if someone is a good investment for you. People are generally concerned about becoming too attached in dating or giving too much of yourself to someone who doesn't deserve it. Is that fair to say? Yes, yep, okay. Is it fair to say that that prevents relationships from happening? Do we already see how this is a cluster F, a cluster? Everybody wants healthy relationships, unless you are especially antisocial, and I'm not talking to you. If that's you, I'm not talking to you. If you're someone who apparently consumes a lot of relationship content but doesn't want a relationship, I think you need help. Okay, I, I, think, I think there's some contradictions there. But I'm gonna leave that one alone. But we we see how it's an issue where everybody wants healthy relationships, but most people are apprehensive about getting the relationship, have anxieties around getting into a relationship with the wrong person, or getting into a relationship with someone who switches up, getting into a relationship and becoming even more drained than you were before. I hear people are tired. People are tired. It's not funny, but there's just it's. I'm laughing because it's so common at this point that it's expected. So we got a ton of people on the dating apps, a ton of people going out into the world trying to find somebody, but feeling apprehensive at the same time. So it creates a natural problem. People are afraid of what? Getting getting hurt, being taken advantage of. Some people are so bothered by the idea, by even the admission of being hurt, that they say, I'm not worried about getting hurt, but I'm worried about losing money. That's another issue. Everybody essentially is afraid of getting hurt. Like, if we can't even admit that, then I want you to pause right here and I want you to, I don't care if you, if you call me for therapy, fine, but you need to talk to somebody because it is a natural fear that you would become attached to somebody, that you would fall in love with somebody, that you would have a deep emotional attachment to someone and it doesn't work out. It would be, it's not, it's so natural to feel fear around that potential problem, that potential outcome. So if, if that feels too hard to admit, I want you to stop right here, <laughs> okay? And I want you to journal, uh, reflect, call a therapist. Because if we can't even admit that there's fear in the mix, then we're going to be fighting against your defensiveness all along the way. And, we, and that's a different issue. That's not, we, not, we don't literally do not have the time <laughs> to do that right now. And it's really it's a, it, an individual personal problem that you have, okay? Not an issue with the dating pool, not an issue with the wording or the tone. It's a personal problem. Um, I, that's a, so we're going to leave that one alone, okay? Are we okay there? <laughs> you you got to admit that there's some fear in the mix. We're going to talk about uh, the conflict of wanting a relationship but also being apprehensive about what it takes to get one and stay in one. First, I want you to understand this. For those of you that grabbed a notebook, thank you, because you know I need you to be able to take some notes. And if you don't have a notebook, type it in the comments and help your people out, okay? I am admitting my fears. I, I love it. I got to screenshot it, okay? I got to screenshot it. I got to start screenshotting some of these, some comments for proof that there are some people who are willing to, to get honest. First, I want you to understand this. Number one, atta becoming attached does not necessarily mean Becoming dependent. Becoming attached doesn't necessarily mean becoming weak. Becoming attached doesn't necessarily mean becoming out of control or under someone else's control. You have to make an emotional connection. That's an attachment to even be motivated 
to continue a relationship with someone, to even be motivated to deepen your intimacy. Thank you. With somebody. Attachment is necessary for a healthy relationship. It is not necessary to just be with somebody. You can, you can be detached with someone. I'm trying, I try so hard to hold back. Okay, I'm trying to get my notes out. You can be detached with somebody every day. You can be detached sleeping next to You woke up with somebody today detached. Somebody did, okay? And it works both ways. Someone has to be emotionally attached to you to want to continue a relationship with you. So I need to be able to emotionally attach to you to want to continue a relationship with you, and you have to be emotionally attached to me to want to create a, create a relationship with me. So attachment is necessary to have a healthy, intimate relationship. Is everybody with me so far? So if I have all of these neg this negative emotional charge around attachment, around the, even the word attached, I think it's weak, I think it's needy, I think it's, it makes me dependent, it, it makes me under your control, puts me out of control. If I have all this negative emotional charge around becoming attached, I simply will not do it. That's why salespeople want you in a, ha a positive mood <laughs> when they're selling something to you because you need to be, you need to have a positive charge to be willing to take it a step further. You need to have a positive emotional charge to it. So if you have a negative emotional charge around becoming attached, you simply will not do it. You might even sabotage it. You might step into a space where you could do it, but then you prevent it from happening and you, you stop the momentum because I have a negative charge around it. What's that negative charge? Something like fear, apprehension, anxiety. So if that's you, and that's most people that have issues with attachment, that's most people that are dating right now. I want to be attached to you, but I have fear around becoming attached. So before we even talk about what people aren't doing, and how people aren't showing up. And all the things that people, all that, all that other stuff. Before we even get there, we got to deal with you. Before we even talk about the dating pool is trash, we got to deal with you. If you have trash feelings and emotions about dating, you part of the problem. Okay? So it doesn't discount all the, 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 misinformation, bad information, problematic behaviors, dysfunctional stuff, toxic people that are out there. All of these things can exist. But if you have negative charge around just the concept of dating and relationships, you will be your biggest problem. Okay? So before we talk about everybody else, check in with you. We, you we got to get you to a place, step one, we got to get you to a place where you are open, receptive, positive, optimistic, hopeful about dating and relationships. That's number one. Not even your boundaries, not even your standards, not even your emotional needs, not even all of that, not even vetting, not even where to go and how to be and how to look and what to weigh and what, how to dress, not even all that. First, it's your attitude. Becoming attached does not mean becoming dependent. So this is, this is a big fear for, some, for many people. This is not every single person's fear, but there are many people who do fear losing themselves in a relationship, becoming too off track of what, you, what your own personal goals are. You feel like you can't have a relationship and achieve the goals that you want for maybe career personal development goals. If I, if I get into a relationship, I'm going to lose some part of myself, whether that's emotionally, mentally, tangibly, like I'm going to lose money or space or time, energy. So understand this. Please write this down. In the healthiest relationships, in the healthiest attachments, so we're talking about secure attachments, you have your own individual life and a life of interdependency with another person. Interdependency. Somebody put that in the comments. Interdependency. 
this is that sweet spot in the middle of hyper independence and codependence, hyper independence, being overly separate from other people, the other person, codependence, being overly absorbed with the other person, overly dependent on the other person. That's codependence. We got hyper independence on one side, codependence on the other side, hyper independence. I don't rely on you for anything. Codependence. I rely on you for everything. Interdependence is this sweet spot in the middle where I am an individual that is intertwined with you. I'm intertwined, but not absorbed. I'm going to give you more on this. There are boundaries and separation. There's also teamwork and cooperation. Boundaries and separation along with teamwork and cooperation. It's not in competition. It's in collaboration. Is anybody hearing me today? Let's go back to mindset real quick. If that feels, we're going to have another timeout right here. If you hear that and think impossible, no way. If I get into a relationship, it will become something that I don't want. Time out. That's a mind, it's an attitude problem. <laughs> okay? That's not a possibility problem. It's an attitudinal problem because if you think that a relationship is going to suck you dry, if you think that you cannot hold yourself and be with someone else, if that's your attitude, your mind, you will be your biggest problem. So before we start talking about, well, everybody wants to be controlling or nobody wants to be a team, and before we even get there, I we know that this is these are issues that we see out here. Before we even get there, though, if you aren't open to this both and mind that I can both be myself and be with you at the same time in a health with a healthy balance, if you don't think that that's possible, you are now my biggest problem. <laughs> okay. Could you, because you, your biggest problem, you come to me asking for help with them, but it's you though. Okay. <laughs> Are y'all, y'all got it? So that's a timeout right here. Check your attitude first. There's boundaries and separation. There's also teamwork and cooperation. They are not in conflict. They're in collaboration. We're talking about interdependency, folks. You have to be willing and open enough to allow the process to happen. It's not going to happen to you if mentally and emotionally you're rejecting it. You're talking about it's not happening for you. Because you mentally and emotionally, it can't happen for you. <laughs> Come on. Mentally and emotionally, it can't happen for you because you've already predetermined that it won't be, it won't happen for you. It can't happen to you. One thing I, I really am very uh, adamant about is I don't like people to be confused. I want you to be very clear. Right. Even if you haven't, you, you, even if you're not at the point where you have solved the problem, I want you to be very clear. We shouldn't be like, I don't know why this is happening. That's what I that's what I'm very adamant about. We shouldn't be like, I can't figure out why I'm not getting the results that I want. You should know. I want you to know. Then we can do something about it. But be but be really clear about what the problem is. There's a comment recently on the page, which I thought was really um, good because it captured what a lot of people think vulnerability and attachment is seen as weakness. Can anyone else relate? Let's talk about what he was getting at. We already talked a bit about the fact that we need to be attached, right? But then we all, I want to also give some space to actually explore today the validity in what this person was saying. Because it's important that we explore this. We can't just, we can't literally just say, this isn't like toxic positivity where we just say, don't be afraid. <laughs> OK, let's just let's actually explore the fear a little bit. Let's actually explore the reality a bit, not just bypass it, not just put a bandaid on it. But let's actually talk about it. Let's actually talk about this reality that in cases, vulnerability and attachment is seen as weakness. The reality is people who fear intimate connections will trigger shame in you for wanting to be connected if you aren't secure in your desire to have a healthy attachment, if you are not confident 
and your desire to be emotionally intimate with another person, if you're not confident in your desire to be married, if you're not confident in your desire to have a long-term relationship, if you're not confident in your own emotions that you have towards someone, loving emotions that you have towards someone, affection that you have towards someone, if you don't feel confident in it and someone rejects it, judges it, criticizes it, it will trigger shame in you for wanting to be connected in that way, for having that kind of desire. People who fear intimate connections will reject the opportunity to be connected. So when we hear this thing like vulnerability and attachment is seen as weakness, the truth is it is seen as weakness, but you got to finish the sentence so you get the whole picture. Seen as weakness by who? It's seen as weakness when? Question mark. It's seen as weakness how? Not just it's seen as weakness, because then remember, if you have a negative charge around it, if you have fear and apprehension around emotional connection, intimacy, attachment, you simply will not do it. You'll have no motivation to do it or sustain it. So finish the sentence or explore the claim. Vulnerability and attachment is seen as weakness by who? By people who fear intimate connections themselves is definitely one. It is seen as weakness. It is seen as scary. It is seen as unnecessary. Like, I don't need to be emotionally attached. Like, I just need somebody to what? Uh, pay the bills. I just need somebody to what? Uh, raise the kids. I just need somebody to what? Cook clean. I just need somebody to run these errands. I just need somebody to help me with my business. I don't even need all that emotional stuff. Explore the claim. What is it that the emotional stuff, like, what does that mean to me? Unnecessary how? You don't relate? To the, you never seen it? You were told that it's not necessary? Explore the claim. People who fear intimate connections will reject the opportunity to do it. They'll reject, they'll criticize, they judge, whether explicitly out loud or implicitly through their behaviors. You express how you felt about someone and now they um, suddenly, their text, it takes, it's taking them now a, a day to text back. When they used to text you back, when, when it was a little bit more shallow or superficial, you were getting normal responses, you know, every couple hours or your two, three times a day, it was normal. And then after you expressed that you wanted something in the relationship or that you saw them in a certain way, it started to get more delayed implicitly through their behaviors, they're rejecting the emotional connection. People who fear intimate connections will reject, criticize, or shame, whether explicitly or implicitly, and they will trigger shame in you if you're not confident in yourself about your own emotions, if you're not confident in yourself about your own desires. You want to be married. If that's you, you want to be married. It's a period. You want a long-term relationship? You want, you want a healthy polyamorous relationship? It's a period. It's not a, I don't know. Well, I'm almost tired of hearing about the people who are like, I want to be single forever, but you stay on this kind of content. I need a separate episode for y'all, just talking to y'all. Well, I'll just stay single forever, but you on YouTube for three hours a day listening to relationship content. Hmm? It makes sense. So you don't want it. You can't get enough of it. You, your, your watch time is the highest among them. When you have that negative charge around the relationships, you're attached to the concept in a negative way. You still, you still, you still attach to it. You still attach to the desire, but you have some anger in there. You got some resentment in there. I have a negative attachment to this. You think people who don't want to get fit stay watching uh, fitness videos? You think they just keep watching fitness videos? Talking about, I hate this, I hate this. No, they, no, no, they don't. Why is it, it, it makes it everywhere else you get it. People who want to build a, uh, a house watch videos on houses. People who want to learn how to decorate watch videos on decorating. People who want to learn how to make candles watch videos on making candles. Why in the world, in the, in the relationship space, does it, in any way makes sense to you that people who don't want relationships are watching relationship content.
it, I almost have a hard time with things that don't make sense. It's almost like I almost start glitching. Like I what? Trying to make something not that doesn't make sense, trying to make it make sense. <laughs> stop playing with yourself. I mean, that's number, stop playing with yourself. Speaking of playing with yourself, let me not. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I almost went over a cliff. Woo! Sometimes you got to be careful. <laughs> okay? Sometimes you got to think before you speak. You got to know when to stop. That's a lesson in and of itself. Okay? That's a lesson in and of itself. <clears throat> Let's keep going. <laughs> the comment was, vulnerability and attachment is seen as weakness. As we talk about the reality that people who fear intimate connections will reject, will criticize. We talked about the reality that if you are not confident in yourself, in your desire for the connection or whatever relationship goal that you have, that you will feel insecure about it when someone rejects it, when someone criticizes it, criticizes it, when someone doesn't reciprocate it, suddenly you're not okay because they haven't validated what you haven't validated yourself. Here's the reality. Another part of this reality. Listen, you really do come off as weak. You hear me? You really do come off as weak when you willingly or unconsciously lose yourself in someone else, when you lack boundaries and are altogether too agreeable, when you don't even know yourself well enough to know where your no is and who relies on, the, on another person, on the other person, the significant other, or the one who you hope to be that, who relies on the other person to be practically all of their fulfillment. It's hard to even trust that kind of person because you, if you're that kind of person, you get your responsibility, your personal responsibility confused with what you think they're responsible for. I want, we gotta have a full picture Vulnerability and attachment aren't the problem. Vulner it's, not, it's not that. It's the way that we manage our vulnerability that's the problem. It's who we attach to and how we attach to them that's the problem. Vulnerability and attachment aren't your enemy. It's the way that you manage it that's the problem. Do y'all follow that? You know how you've heard of something like um, money only exposes who you already were. Like if you got a lot of money and you were a bad person, you only gonna, we only gonna see it amplified. It's gonna be magnified. If money, if, if you got a lot of money and you were a good person, you're gonna see it amplified, magnified. You've heard that before. I want you to think about a, a, attachment in a similar way, okay? The quality of your attachment in a similar way. It's not attachment that's a bad thing. It's not attachment that's a problem. It's not money that's the problem. It's the person managing the money. It's the person managing the attachment that gets you a positive or a negative result. If you have a negative, unhealthy attachment in a relationship with someone, the, the relationship will be bad. Attachment will look terrible. It'll look like a terrible idea. You'll never want to do it again. When you have attachment in a healthy and safe relationship, It'll feel like the best thing you ever did. You won't ever want to lose it. It'll feel like you couldn't live without it. It's not attachment. That's your enemy. It's just like it's not money. That's the problem. It's the, man it's the money manager. It's the attachment manager. That's the issue. Let's keep going. Last thing here, y'all. We got to go. We know that there's anxiety and apprehension around being around getting a relationship, around being in a relationship because people are afraid to get hurt. They're afraid of getting taken advantage of. Number one, this is the last two things, y'all. Number one, you have to do it anyway. You have to resolve to do it anyway. Yes, it's scary. Yes, it can be hard. Yes, you can get hurt along the way. You have to resolve on the front end to do it anyway. You're going to try. Yes, I'm going to try. Yes, I'm going to do it. Yes, I'm going to recover if there's pain along the way. Yes, if there's rejection, I'm going to keep going. Resolve to do it anyway. Y'all got that? Number two, do it safely. Do it anyway and do it safely. I'm not talking about just jumping off cliffs everywhere. I'm not talking about just putting your heart out and just letting it get stomped on everywhere without any sort of uh, awarenesses. You can do it safely by having self-awareness, by knowing your boundaries, 
Okay, knowing the things that trigger you and having boundaries around those things, knowing what your needs are, being able to speak up when things don't sit right with you, speak up when things are confusing. You can protect yourself. You can help yourself by checking in with yourself. Are you aligned with your values and your personal relationship goals, not abandoning yourself or prioritizing their personal relationship goals over yours? Being, building a secure attachment takes some time, and it's going to come with some bumps, okay? There are going to be some things that happen that make you feel like, I'm not sure if this is going to work. There's going to be some things that happen where that come up that you're like, can I trust you the way that I thought that I could? Look, let's be, let's be realistic. It doesn't mean that it's something like cheating. It doesn't mean it's something like lying in a big way or something, but it can mean that there are some things that might come up, that will come up, that make you doubt, Be realistic. It doesn't mean that it's the end of the world, but it's some things that, that are going to come up. So you got to choose someone that you're willing to do the bumps with. <laughs> choose someone that you're willing to do the bumps with. Four things. Double A, double R. Are, is this person aligned with your values? Is the, are you attracted to this person physically and naturally? Do they want the same relationship type as you? Are they ready to do it? Are they ready to go? Double A, double R. So that's, that, that's, a, that's, that's glue stuff. So that regardless of the bumps, that, we, that there's something that we can count on those things. And then we manage the, the things that come up along the way. Because you're going to have to deal with something. Okay. It can't, it can't always be parachuting out every time something goes wrong. So those are some things that you could consider, those four things that help you determine, like, is this someone that, that's, that's, is it worth it? All right, looks like we're all good to go. Thanks for being here, y'all. Have a good Sunday. I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.